at uh, how the political and economic elites um, reconcile the fact that um, on the one hand their countries are committed to the Paris Agreement but on the other hand they continue extracting fossil fuels and uh, we are analyzing how they talk about it, what discourses they use to bring these two things together. For this we looked at um, policy documents, at quotes in the media and other types of documents. For instance there is a um, very technical managerial language so you make it an issue that's expert and that's only about emissions and that make it easy to say well we'll compensate so it's fine we'll continue extract and uh, we will still meet uh, climate goals or another example is how in Colombia you see a new story about oil and gas being central core to the energy transition partly because of the revenues they, they generate and can uh, facilitate investments uh, for the energy transition. So the revenue question is really the one million dollar question because we know that renewable energy delivers uh, energy access. We know um, about uh, other technologies that can uh, facilitate the energy transition. But governments in fossil fuel producing countries, they can't get the same revenues uh, from these, these technologies and these revenues are political capital. That's the way they keep in power. So this is really the core, the core question here. In the Nigerian case, it's that um, you see a bit of a discourse of opposition um, between the old um, oil-based economy, which was all about the resource curse and um, exporting raw materials and not keeping much revenue in the country. So now the discourse is about natural gas, which is both an answer to um, the climate problem, because it's a cleaner fuel, um, according to these discourses, and the answer to this economic aspiration of becoming a modernized, industrialized, competitive economy, which relies on itself and its own production. So natural gas in these discourses really helps square the circle in a way. Of course, part of it is um, of challenging these discourses is really zooming into these um, inconsistencies and really asking, so um, what, um, what does it really mean? Is, does it really work, um, what is claimed, um, in terms of um, energy specifics and emission specifics? But on the other hand, we also notice that it's very much about um, development and the vision of development and the self-imagery of the country and what the country wants to achieve on the international level, on the economic level for its population. And um, basically, um, we are working on thinking, okay, how can these needs and aspirations be also answered with an alternative um, development vision, which is not based on fossil fuel extractives and extraction and draws on other assets.